Greetings ladies and mentalgens and welcome to today's Reddit series video from the subreddit HFY called Warned. Written by You Sure I'm Not a Robot. The link to the original will be down below and as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 10 The Forge Commander Six watched as the ships arised, filling the system. She had seen all the models the Navy had presented. Ha! <laughs> Why would you try and use tactics designed to defeat an ape next to a tree? In space! Space, the ultimate three-dimensional battlefield! Her tactics were based on algorithms taken from the sea and the air. Raptors, sharks, bee swarms, the orca class was a particular favorite of hers. Here, they would take on new forms. Commander, two fleets are entering the system. UAA is only available on one. The other reads as unword biomass. Satellites are tracking. Looks like the Haswars have come to fight. They are perfect for this. Let's see if they recognize the tactics they are so fond of. Send out the welcome protocol. The forge lit up and she began sending out warnings, pleas, threats. Commander Rixick added his voice. He had been concerned about making her a target like this, but she wanted close quarters. Oswald's fleet. The fools reveal themselves. This will be easier than I thought. Shipmaster Armin, all ships attack the planet. No survivors. We will finish this. Commander Six, activate the UA-8 on the other fleets. Slow them down, but don't stop them. Shipmaster, our sensors are useless. At this speed, we could hit a star and not see it coming. The shipmaster cursed. I order the fleet to visual tracking. Better to get there late than to die in the cursed system. The cloud of some small ships began circling the Haswas fleet. Their path was too erratic for point defense, and they weren't attacking. Just swarming the Haswas sensors. Then they began flying into the shields. Not many, but enough to trigger alarms and have the ships open fire into the dark. Some punching tiny holes in the shields, leaving a moment for more to penetrate and explode on the hulls. Insignificant damage, but it was beginning to wear on the Haswas. Some forgotten instinct was making itself heard. Commander Six smiled. She could guess what the Haswas were feeling, the same unease when they sensed something unexpected. The Haswas may have itself into metal monster, but it at once crept across the homeworld in the night. Her larger ships came closer. First, it was the barracuda types. They swirled around the ships, dipping in and out of the void. Sudden attacks blew more damage into the hulls. Haswas responded with rage, firing blindly. Larger ships appeared briefly in the distance, not attacking yet. What is this? This is not what this is. This is hunting. I am not prey. The fear was unfamiliar. The panic grew. Out of the dark flew thousands of predators. They did not stop, simply impacting wherever they sent damage. The wasp ships continued their dance. Haswas broke screaming. The Haswas fleet scattered every ship alone. They were hunted to their own destruction as they tried to escape. Shipmaster, the Haswas fleet is destroyed. We listened as they died. We don't know how or why, but it panicked and ran. What the frick are these humans? Go into the defensive formation. We don't move until the other fleets arrive. Let's get out of here alive. Frick, the council, this place is a graveyard. Commander Six watched as the Yarrow fleet went into a huddle. Obviously, they heard all of the screaming. Presumably, they were waiting for help. They should have called up by now. She instructed the satellites to continue playing the screams of the Haswas dying. Begin round two. Armin's were men were scared, and he could smell it through the fleet. His captains were constantly looking for updates on their allies. When would they arrive? Did he have any more intel? Was it true that the humans were all dead? Are we fighting ghosts? Can we stop the screaming? He had no answers. He had called for help. He had listened to the same broadcast from the accursed place. Right now, he just instructed them to boost the shields and hold position. He suspected some would have broken away, except for the screaming outside. Commander Six sent in a fleet's shoals, packs, and pods. The swarm surrounded Armin's fleet. The small ships began the same pattern of attack, but this fleet was already panicked. 
They just boosted their shields. The larger ships began attacking. They were inflicting damage, inflicting horror. The hours grew. The attacks mounted. Larger and larger ships. He began taking losses. First, the smaller ships. Then, the less defended support ships. His crews were at breaking point. More and more captains demanded a retreat. The satellites now carried the screams of his own dead and dying. Then, a battleship-class ship arrived out of the blindness and blew asunder several of his frigates before returning to the dark. He knew that it was over. Call the humans, see if there's someone out there that is willing to take our surrender. The satellites went silent. Commander Rexic, Withdraw your fleet to these coordinates. If you deviate, you will be destroyed. If we detect any transmissions, you will be destroyed. Jettison all ammunition immediately, and you will not be fired upon if you obey these instructions. We include a full explanation of your status as prisoners of war. End of chapter. Chapter 11. End game. Commander Rexek. Commander Five has achieved his ambitions. We hope he went well. We were all asked to die for humanity. We do that by setting aside ours. We are doing what we would never ask anyone else to do. I will release any of you from this burden. I even beg of you to allow yourselves a second chance. If some small part of you wishes to walk the earth again, please do so. The worlds will never mention us amongst their heroes. We have chosen a dark path, then we travel together. Know that your families, your friends, would reject everything that we have done. I do not doubt that we are right. We will stand in the dark and protect them. But know that we become the monsters in the dark for our enemies. We could never forgive what we have done, and I do not expect them to. Commander Irisk, Flowing River Fleet, Tanzan Nation. What is the progress on our engineering issues? Sir, they report that they have all systems active. Some systems are less than ideal, but they all work. Good. Our orders are to move in immediately. Any response from the other fleets in there? Nothing, sir. Not since the screaming. That doesn't sound good, does it? No, sir. Fleet Manager Overworld, Battlefleet 1, Legat Corporation. The Council orders have changed. We are to join up with Commander Irisk's fleet and move in immediately. Of course, Fleet Manager, proceeding to rendezvous. Commander Six watched the two fleets arrive at the edge of the system. She had withdrawn all of her assets out of the range, leaving them to sit quietly in the dark. The Forge continued to warn and threaten, drawing the enemy towards her. Commander Six, Commander Rexic, I have sent your fleets to you. Your armies are ready. Commander Rexic, thank you, Commander. The soldiers are very different from Commander Five's designs. Anything I need to know? Commander Six. Not really. Some added features that are in the patch notes. I also redesigned them a little to fit more in. Commander Rexic. That's not what I was referring to. Commander Six. Oh, that. Well, I remembered some of the old stories that this seems to fit. Commander Rexic. You have sent me 300,000 soldiers molded on Slenderman. I am very grateful that you are on our side. Commander Six, thank you, sir. I wish you well. Going dark. Commander Rexic. Godspeed and fair sailing. Commander Irisk watched his senses as he reported nothing. The corpse of the Haswas were littered at the edge of the system, but there appeared to be no enemy debris. He couldn't understand how that was possible. We have contact at the rear. It's faint, but it's there. It's fading in and out, but it's following us in. Commander Six began broadcasting behind them. The satellites began broadcasting the screams of the Haswas again, remixed with the shipmaster Armand's fleet crying for help. Commander Irisk. What the frick is that noise? Turn it off. Sir, I can't turn it off. I will be unable to scan that area. Well, put your headphones on. Sir... I respectfully decline. Commander Six's fleet moved silently closer to the enemy, appearing as ghosts, flashes in the dark as the council fleets approached the forge. Commander Six gave the order to begin the attack. The swarm began, hitting the rear of the fleet, not enough to turn and fight, but enough to ensure they kept moving, herding them. Fleet Manager Overworld, prepare to attack the planet. Whatever is following us obviously is too weak to fight. 
Perhaps the previous fleets have had some success. Fleet manager, Commander Arisk, wishes to turn and fight. He doesn't want to be trapped against the planet. Remind him of our orders are to attack. Whatever is behind us is afraid to appear. We will deal with it later. Commander Irisk. Crap! Continue the advance. The planet came into range, and both fleets opening up a salvo of heavy nukes. Commander Six grinned again. What will they do next? The missiles approached the planet, and Commander Six's defense began. She didn't believe counter missiles were worth the effort. Instead, she learned from nature. She had surrounded her planet with a layer upon layer of parasites. They served no use in the deep space, but here and now they had a purpose. The missiles began disintegrating long before they reached the surface. Heat shields failed, engines shut down, warheads exploded in the airless skies. Sir, we cannot identify any anti-missile defenses. Whatever is doing this, we cannot see it. Where are the bunkers? Find me installations to attack. Find me something. There were plenty of bunkers and installations on the surface. They didn't do anything, but she felt that they added a certain atmosphere to the place. They also told her what the enemy would be aiming at. Tell the swarm to attack. Drive them in. The fleets pressed on, intense plasma fire hitting bunkers, giving satisfying explosions. They are fading, continue firing. The swarm descended on the enemy. Though slow balled up, this time it was powered up into the ships. They caused absolute chaos. Heavy ships slammed straight into them. Smaller ones broke through. Thousands of them. Commander Six smiled. Execute end game. Send our intel. Godspeed, commanders. The entire surface of the planet launched towards the fleets. Shards the size of battleships hurled into ships. Commander Six rode the wave straight into the fleets. This was a personal revenge for being buried alive. She threw her planet at them, and she was still laughing when she slammed into the fleet manager's ship. Everything and everyone had died. The Council War Room, the prosecutor for battle. Excellencies, you must face facts. We are losing. Every fleet that we've sent against the humans is dead. Their offensive against both my homeworld and the others were successful. The Honorable Intelligence and the Zernep are dead. We have no fleets, we have no armies, and not a single victory to show for it. We have made a mistake and are paying for it. You must contact their commander, Rexic, and ask for peace. Or at least a ceasefire. Time to build up for this war properly. Obviously, we will destroy them, but now is not the time. The Council. No, we will not be humiliated by an upstart race. Order the council shipyards to go to full production. Begin conscription on civilian pilots. Call up the militias. We will find the resources. If we fail here, this council will fail. The moment our client states realize that we're struggling, they will turn on us. The former prosecutor of battle. You are compounding our error. This has already taken everything from me. I will forward my immediate resignation. Guards! Please place the former prosecutor of battle under arrest. He has been sentenced to death by the council. Carry out the sentence in the courtyard. Perhaps that might inspire some loyalty. End of chapter. I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the channel or the author, all the stuff is down below. And as always, I hope that you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next story. Cheers.